Hi, I'm Mike Hohner of the Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for February 23rd, 2024. Uh, let's see. Pretty solid new arrival week. Uh, kind of like in the middle range. A couple of good uh, pre-orders that finally came in. A couple of decent restocks and some cool pre-orders were announced. Uh, got word on three titles from Mobile Fidelity. The first one is Bruce Springsteen. The next title they're going to be doing as a one-stop in SACD. Let's see, The Wild, The Innocent, and The E Street Band as a one-step and an SACD. Both of those have to be announced dates. Also, they announced a Miles Davis on the corner super vinyl. So that is the single disc 33 RPM pressed on super vinyl, $59.99 price. On a side note, I've been getting a lot of emails lately. A lot of titles that I've had up for pre-order and other people have had up for pre-order have disappeared from Mobile Fidelity's website. Mobile Fidelity now has a policy to where they're not going to be talking about things that are years in the future. Everything that they talk about will be kind of a pending release. So stuff that's planning on coming out very soon. So anything that is not planned to be released this year or anything that is really theoretically going to come out towards the end of the year is kind of been removed. So that affected some of the Van Halen one steps people emailed me about. I did speak with Mobile Fidelity and they told me these are still planned. You know, they're planning on, you know, they're working on them. They're planning on these things coming out. They just have a few things slotted before that. So they're going to be later releases. So I wanted to let everybody know that, uh, you know, maybe my emails will calm down a little bit. <laughs> People are like, oh my God, I'm not going to get all the Van Halen. What am I going to do? You know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, it's coming. <laughs> Anyways, Mobile Fidelity. Analog Productions has kind of announced a few things. I'm pretty sure I'd mentioned the John Coltrane ballads. Uh, they also announced that, and they announced War's Greatest Hits as a double disc 45 RPM. Uh, both of these I'm going to have in a couple of weeks. So those are theoretically two titles that they dropped out of the blue, but you know, they take a little bit of time from release. It takes a week or two to get me titles. Speaking of, later today, but I don't actually have them to show you guys now, which is kind of disappointing because those are really the three big titles I'm getting for this week. But later today, and while you're watching this, you should be able to order these and get them, you know, they should be in the store. I'm getting the next three analog production titles, which are this uh, CSN, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Couch Album. I'm getting Hootie and the Blowfish, Cracked Rear View. Which actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy that. I, I mean, the '90s like Blues Traveler, Hootie and the Blue Blue, Blue <laughs> Hootie and the Blowfish. Those are like guilty pleasure records. Now I look back on those kind of fondly. Uh, and Matchbox Twenty, yourself or someone like you. Those three titles are all coming uh, later today, so I will have them and start shipping them very very soon. Uh, a lot of people internationally ask me about those as well. Pretty regularly. We ship internationally. We have very aggressive postage rates. If you choose the DHL Worldwide Expedited Option, which is pretty reasonable, you get stuff very quickly. We're talking a couple of days quick. All your taxes, duties, everything's paid on the website. There's no surprises. There's no customs bills. It's a very nice feature. But one of the drawbacks is because of the way we process things, we don't really offer pre-orders for international customers. So I know a lot of people are looking forward to those internationally. I will have them available later today. Okay, let's start with a couple of SACDs. One is Joni Mitchell's Blue. This is the companion SACD to the One Step that came out. And this, I think, is just a restock. This has been out for some time. This is Elvis Presley in Memphis. This is limited to 3,000 copies. The Joni Mitchell is an unlimited edition. So it'd be more like when they make 3,000 of these, that's it. No more. The contract's up. This uh, is more of your two traditional type of release to where, you know, they got X amount of years to make them and contracts up. Okay, both of these were pre-orders. This is kind of the next run of the Contemporary Series for this year, starting with Art Pepper Quintet. Smack up. Love the Art Pepper Contemporary stuff. And out of all the stuff that I listened to this week, this was actually the first title. Uh, part of the Acoustic Sound Series by Contemporary, all analog, cut by Bernie Grumman from the original master tape with kind of like a tip-on jacket. It doesn't specify who does it, but you know, that stout and quality tip-on jacket. The very second album, it's been a busy week listening to stuff. I had a lot of uh, personal records I got in from Vinyl Me Please came in. Uh, 
And then a lot of great titles this week came in. The next title I listened to, and the one that I've kind of been, uh, I've liked the most, and I'm uh, going to probably be listening to this tomorrow. It's been a long time since I listened to this record. Stan Getz and Bill Evans. Bill Evans is a very, he's uh, one of those guys i got to be in the mood to listen to. I like my jazz more busy, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I typically like a horn section on the albums I listen to. I mean, that's kind of what I, I, when you hear me talk about jazz, my brain gravitates towards a busy horn section, not necessarily free jazz, although I like free jazz, but a busier horn section and a nice aggressive drummer. That's kind of my thing. So a lot of times Bill Evans doesn't fit that. Uh, been a while since I listened to this album, but I really like this record. Stan Getz really, really does the trick for me on this. Not that Bill Evans isn't fantastic. Some of the stuff he's on are my favorite records, but as a leader, uh, he's, I've enjoyed him, but he's kind of, you got to be in the right mood to where like, I'm always in the mood to listen to something like this. And it was really, really good. I recommend it. This is kind of a cool record. Uh, for a few reasons, but I'll talk about them. Violent Femmes. This is a box set of the album, the self-titled album. Limited to 5,000 copies, but this is, let's see, so you get three LPs plus a replica seven inch of Ugly and Give Me the Car. Talks about the hits, Blister in the Sun. But let's see, three LP replica, what are the bonus discs? There's three LPs. What are the discs two and three? I guess the other two, disc two, disc three, are rarities and live sessions. It's limited to 5,000 copies, but what's cool, it's all analog, cut by Kevin Gray from the original Master Tapes. And this is kind of cool because right when I went, I went and saw Kevin Gray. We talked a little bit about the uh, uh, Anthony Wilson title. This was August of last year. We talked a little bit about the Anthony Wilson title. We talked a little bit about the Kirsten Ekins record. But right at the time I was there, this was actually what he was working on like shortly before I got there, or like shortly after I got there, the Violent Femmes, Blister on the Sun. So in like the back of my mind, I was like, knew it was coming out. And then I saw it, I'm like, man, this, what was interesting though, is they didn't really advertise it as being cut by Kevin Gray, I think until recently. But all analog cut by Kevin Gray, only 5,000. But what's really cool is it's a really exceptionally well done box set. Look at that, that's like a picture window. You know, it's like die cut, really well done. I'm looking forward to this. Great album. I'm not like a huge Violent Femmes fan, but I love this first record and I play it quite frequently. And it's really, uh, I don't think I'm alone in that. A lot of people like, I notice when people come, you have any Violent Femmes? And I'm like, yes, I have every album, but the first one. They're like, oh, and then they, of course, that's what they're looking for. So I'm guessing maybe they'll put that in print, but as of now we have the deluxe box set. Okay. I don't know how this is going to go over on vinyl. This is really a CD kind of band, but we don't really do much in the way of CDs. That is BTS. How is your K-pop collection, guys? Do you need a BTS record for your K-pop collection? This is Love Yourself. Like the CDs, it's a really well done package. It's like a leather type of cover with a foiling. Uh, it is actually, ooh, this is the Korean pressing. <laughs> Printed with soy ink. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. Uh, there it is, BTS. I don't know if I've ever listened to BTS in my life, but I've, I get asked, every time I seem to get these like BTS adjacent artists, you know, former members of BTS, they've never sold too terribly well, but I'm curious how the actual, a BTS record on vinyl is gonna sell. I would think it would be popular because they are quite popular, and I get asked for K-pop all the time, but everybody that buys K-pop wants CDs. It's kind of the thing. It's really bizarre. Okay, Oingo Boingo, Dead Man's Party. This is, oh, look at this. So this is by Rebellion Masters, who's been doing these for quite some time. And it's kind of cool in the sense that he does these limited edition runs of 500. So if you're an Oingo Boingo fan, you're probably losing your marbles because if you're like the kind of guy that's got to collect everything, there's like 72 variants of these things at this point. You know, 500 copies on purple and pink and 500 copies on black and yellow and 500 copies, you get the drift, right? But uh, here is another variant. Uh, let's see, this is limited edition of 1,000 on autumn gold and orange vinyl. 
I actually don't mind because they sell out pretty quickly, but the Oingo Boingo stuff is very hard to find original. They're typically been played quite a bit. And these things really, however many variants they need to make, I don't mind because it needs to be on the shelf. People need to be able to come into the store and be able to buy Oingo Boingo records, especially this one, because this is their best album. Okay, the next from the print, Prince print, <laughs> the Prince archive, that is the, well, from the Prince Vault, that is The Vault is the title of the record. The Vault, Old Friends for Sale, a decade of recordings from Prince's storied vault curated by the artist. I think this originally came out as like a website exclusive or there was that point in time, like in the late 90s and the early O's, I remember he had a, on his website, he had like website member exclusive recordings. Like the only way you can get them was through his website. You know, that was 25 years ago, so my brain's a little foggy on it, but I distinctly remember something like that. But there it is. I think this might have been one of those digital-only releases or something, but don't quote me on it. Okay, we've got Kevin Gray. We've got Neil Young. New Neil Young release, mastered from the original analog tapes. Fantastic, with the sparse code. There's two versions of these. I've got the Indie Store exclusive, which is in, which is in my hand. This is Neil Young with Crazy Horse, the 1975 Zuma session. 16 songs on two LPs with seven songs never before released on vinyl. Includes a print of the cover art. So the indie, I'm guessing, is the, is the print, includes the bonus print at the same price. So good deal. Extra, extra something for nothing. But yeah, so it looks like disc one's the album, disc two's the bonus stuff. And then I also have it on the non-poster uh, litho version. New album from MGMT, right? Yes. Loss of Life. This is the indie retail exclusive Blue Jay Opaque of Vinyl. Motorhead, live at Donington. Download Fest, 08, on yellow vinyl. We've got uh, Olivia Dean, Messy. What is this? Colby T. Helms, Tales of Misfortune, exclusive dark blue vinyl. Poppy, this is an indie exclusive, which essentially is only available to stores that are participating in Record Store Day. So to be get these indie exclusive variants, you have to be a store that participates in Record Store Day. So this is black in silver in yellow. That's the color, black in silver in yellow, 2LP, includes a download card. On a side note, I uh, did a little video talking about Record Store Day, and man, the more I look at this list, I think this is gonna be a really solid Record Store Day. A lot of people are telling me they're looking forward to it. There's no huge super Taylor Swifty type record for this record store day, but people are really digging it. I think it's gonna be quite good. I'm getting emails like crazy, are you getting this? Are you getting this? I'm getting everything. I don't know how many of anything I get. Some titles I'll get five of something, some titles I'll get 300 of something. Everything that doesn't sell in the store eight o'clock when we open on record store day will be on the website the following day. I think it's at five or six o'clock Eastern time the second day. Don't quote me on it, I'll get you more information later on. Uh, as soon as it's allowed to buy Record Store Day rules, we put on our website the following day, that's when we do it. But uh, I'll get you more information on that. Also on a side note, the Coherent Records next release, the Anthony Wilson, Hackensack West, I uh, spoke to Kevin on it. We're talking a couple, three, four weeks. It's, it's good. pretty soon, we're gonna have that pretty soon. So if you don't have your pre-order in, get that pre-order in you'll be the first ones to get it because as soon as I get it, it's getting shipped. Amarith, the catalyst. But yeah, I wanna say two or three weeks, you know? That's kind of where we're shooting for target-wise. I think that's when it's coming. The Crown, season six. Limited to a thousand copies on a royal blue colored vinyl. This is number 662. Uh, we're bringing back the the 80s here with Debbie Gibson's Electric Youth on Friday Music. The Cult, Dream Time, 1984 debut album, a record that you don't really see very much in the States anyways. 
the newest album by Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart with Jules Holland, Swing Fever. You know, I love Rod Stewart. I've seen Rod Stewart in concert a couple times in Vegas locally. I don't really care for his, you know, Frankie Sinatra loungy type of shtick he does. And it's really even weird when you see him in concert because he's doing like, you know, do you think I'm sexy? Then I'll do a couple of lounge tunes, you know, like a little lounge tunes. And it goes from like, do you think I'm sexy? Lounge tune, lounge tune, lounge tune. Uh, like ain't superstitious or, you know, that. It's like, whoa, it's like I'm seeing two shows in one. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Half naked macho Randy uh, Savage on the back. This was originally, I talked about this in the Record Store Day, record, uh, record Store Day video. This was a record that came out for Record Store Day and became the most expensive release like right away. It went from a record that I looked at, I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll sell a couple of those. A couple of wrestling fans are going to want the Macho Man, Randy Savage, Be a Man album. It went from like $20 to like $250 overnight. Subsequently, they repressed it like three or four times, including this, which is the newest version of that repress, which is the picture disc. Which actually, if I was into, uh, you know, this type of record, uh, I would imagine a picture disc would probably be one of the cooler ways to get it. Because, I mean, are people listening to? How frequently do you guys have this Macho Man Randy Savage record in your collection? Tell me how many times you've listened to it. Because it seems to me like this would be more of a picture disc type of purchase. Bad Brains, the Omega Sections. From Music on Vinyl, we've got Fear, the record. Uh, limited to 1,500 copies on translucent magenta vinyl. This is 104. The Water Boys. This is the sea. Twisted Sisters, Under the Blade. 40th anniversary, a deluxe edition by Friday Music. Special barcode, so it looks like it might have two LPs in it. Two LP, it looks like the album and a bunch of bonus tracks. By Friday Music. Neck Deep. Life's not out to get you. 30 years of Hopeless on red vinyl. Rita Marley. Very musical family, huh? It's like the wife, every kid, every kid's kid. They're all uh, making records. But uh, Rita Marley. Actually, I think in a couple hours, I think later tonight, we're actually going to go see the Bob Marley movie. Angel wanted to see it, but we were uh, in Las Vegas this past weekend, so we didn't get a chance to do it. But I think we're uh, after I film this video, we're going to go see it. Hopefully, it's good. Ace Freely, 10,000 volts. Glitter-er. -er. Glitter-er. -er. Rationale. Deftones, White Pony. Available for the first time in 10 years. I know, that's a little bit of a joke. Huh? Why did you take you 10 years? It's like, it's, an, it's like they're advertising. First time available in 10 years, which really it's like, we're morons and we didn't put this out in 10 years, but we should have, but we didn't. But we did now, so we're gonna talk. Like, Come on guys. Certain records just like need to be in print. I just, it drives me absolutely crazy because there's so many people that just don't understand the concept. People come in the store like, yeah, hey Mike, I'm looking for uh, that Tool and Ema record on vinyl. Do you have that? Oh yeah, I got one over here. I don't, so don't email me. Yeah, it's $1,500 and they're like confused. Like, huh? No, I, I want a record of Tool. I want a Neem on vinyl. What do you mean that's 15? I'm like, well, you know, and then you got to give the speech. Well, like this, and nobody's, they don't make it, and it hasn't been made since the original, you know, and then, you know, the average new buyer of music, their eyes just start glazing over because they're used to the mentality as if I want to buy such and such, I just go online and I can stream it, or if it's a CD, I can buy it. You know what I mean? So certain things at this point in time in the vinyl boom slash rebirth, come on, guys, certain things need to be in print. Him, Razor Blade Romance. Acid Jazz, Not Jazz, We've Got a Funky Beat. This is actually jazz. 
This is funk jazz. <laughs> Dee, who uh, does a lot of our receiving, she's like, what do I do with this? She goes, is it jazz? It says it's jazz online, but then on the record it says it's not jazz. I'm like, play it. It's jazz, but it's funk. Keith Sweat. Make it last forever. Make it last forever. So this is a reissue on black ice vinyl. And if you come into the store and you buy that Keith Red, Keith, uh, Keith Red, Keith Sweat, while supplies last, they sent me the do not disturb, this do not disturb door hanger. It's kind of cool. Rhino does, Warner Music does send out like tchotchkes type stuff. Uh, this is like one of them. So it is kind of cool. It's like kind of, we're getting something, not quite to the glory days of vinyl and physical media, but it's like they're starting to do like little extra things, which is kind of cool. Gloom Division. I don't know how, but they found me. Wow, that's cheap. $22.99. Look at that, on Concord. I almost feel like I should double check that price. It seems too cheap. This is a restock, but I figured I'd show it to you guys because a lot of international people have been emailing me and say, hey, you know, I'd like to buy this. Uh, this is the Jennifer Warren's Famous Blue Raincoat 3LP One Step. Oh boy. This is number 666 of 7,500. And it's even on Crooked. Look, it's like a crooked, yeah. Ooh, eerie, right? Restock of this, the All Analog, Gil Scott Heron, uh, Free Will, All Analog by the Flying Dutchman. This is the second one of these All Analog Gil Scotts they've done. And another Rebellion Master, Rebellion Master of Boingo Boingo's Boingo. This is a limited edition of 500 on green and gold marble vinyl. Restock of ACDC's Razor's Edge. Black Sabbath. I feel like this is probably just a restock of the debut album. I think this is just a restock of, this is the import though on Vertigo. This is another restock, but just a title we can't seem to keep in stock. Sade's Greatest Hits. Okay, some more restocks and then a Mobile Fidelity SKU that got reactivated. This is a reactivated SKU, I showed it. I sold out of it immediately last week, but I got a restock on it. Billy Joel's 52nd Street. It's like a $200 record. It was cool. They put it back in a print. I'm hoping they do the rest of them. The greatest hits would be nice, but that was limited to 3,000 copies. God, I remember a couple years back getting 500 bucks a piece for those. Those were going for crazy money. But it'd be nice to get that in print. Restock of upstairs at Eric's. Yaz. One of the earlier, uh, or one of the more recent uh, mobile fidelities that was actually cut from the analog master tape. That is Little Feet's self-titled. Yeah, let's see, mastered by Sean Britton at Mobile Fidelity. This is 15 analog master, analog console, too late. Got a restock of the Carol King Tapestry. Got a, actually, this is another one that they just put back in print. So we got a couple that they've actually reactivated. This is the Cars, self-titled, uh, debut album. This is another analog uh, pressing. Analog master, analog console, analog, or analog console to the lathe. This is another title that they've essentially just reactivated. It was out of their system at least for a couple of uh, years. Done by Krieg Wonderlich, assisted by Rob. Okay, so this is TSD-256. This is the 45 RPM of Janis Joplin's Pearl. Got a restock of this. I really just, the reason I'm showing is because most of them came damaged, so I didn't have a lot of available inventory on this, but I finally actually have it. This is the Blue Note to Tone Poet of Trio Fascination by Joe Lovano. Two LP set. Good lineup, actually I pulled one for myself. I hadn't heard it yet, but Elvin Jones, Dave Holland, looking forward to listening to that. And last but not least, I'm going to show you we got another Japanese uh, restock in. I've showed these quite a few times. Actually, a few of these might be new. I'm trying to think here. Let me pull one out that I believe is new. Tony Fraschella, I believe is new. I don't think I've had this before. But 
they've done just a great job with these. Uh, they come in a separate DJ 12 inch sleeve, so you don't get seam splits. Really extremely high quality covers. Uh, the ones that are pressed in Japan are just on the most quiet, impeccably clean vinyl. Some of them like the Billy Joel 52nd Street. This is a good sounding record. I mean, it's really good. This was the inaugural record when they opened back up Sony Japan. So the first record pressed at Sony's new pressing plant in Japan. Oddly enough, I think it kind of went hand in hand with the fact that I'm almost positive that this was the very first mass produced CD as well. So kind of cool, but uh, this is actually one of them uh, that I kept for myself. I don't know what these four hype stickers say, but uh, like I said, the stuff that's being pressed at so Sony Japan, unbelievable. Most of the stuff is DSD. Actually, I think all of it's DSD from what I can gather. This is, let's see, a mono copy of Beverly Kennedy Sings for Johnny Smith in mono. But they just do an absolute fantastic job on the covers. They're all replicated tip-ons. My Funny Valentine, Miles Davis in concert. Got a restock of Miles Davis's Milestones. But I'll crack one of these open. Here's a cool one to show you here. Miles Davis's Miles ahead with the cover that Miles Davis absolutely despised and had changed. But look how fantastic these covers are. These are the way I wish American records were made, even not like the higher end stuff. They kind of, we go to the extreme with these like glossy cover, uh, you know, like the tone poets. They're nice, but me personally, I would like something more reminiscent of like the Blue Note stuff that was made for the mono series that Kevin Gray cut from a digital file, but it was made for uh, Disc Union over there. Those are like that nice, those covers are so fantastic. If you hold an original mint copy and one of those covers side by side and stand four foot back, it's hard to tell the difference. But look how fantastic they are. These are beautiful tip on jackets, but they look like modern vintage cover. I mean, they look like a cover that was made you know, it looks like a mint cover from the 50s. These are just unbelievable. But that's how, uh, that's how they do it. There's one thing that the Japanese have, you know, I've given them a lot of slack over the years, but there's one thing you can't slack them on is they make absolutely the best covers. And have for, you know, quite some years. What the hell am I doing here? Okay, but uh, they're all kind of like that. So this is, and any of these, by the way, if I sell out of these, put a restock notification in. These things come in just such dribs and drabs. I order 20 of one, they send me three, then two weeks from now they send me three, and then they send me five. It's, they come in dribs and drabs. You gotta put restock notifications in on these. Miles Davis's Sorcerer, Miles Davis's Nefertiti. These are all the Sony titles. Then there's some Warner titles. This is John Coltrane's Coltrane Jazz. Same quality cover. And the Bill Evans album. But that is it for this week's new arrival video. Check us out online at theingroove.com. Until next time.